So today I'm going to be showing you how to find equations with half cycle. The worksheet I'm going to be using is here. This is the first page answer key and if you want it you can pause it. And the second page is right here so if you want the answers to this you can as well pause it. So for number one, it says find the equation of the graph below in terms of sine and in terms of cosine. No decimals. Use the dots provided as your dot ones. So the first basics we have to know about this is a full positive sine graph looks like this. Okay, so say this is your midpoint about right here and you're going up first, which is a positive sine graph. For a positive cosine graph, you are starting from here and going down first, almost like a V. So these are your two sine and cosine graphs that you need to know are your basic positive graphs. So right now I have my setup of my equations for cosine and sine. Now I have found the midpoint and the stretch marks of the graph. For sine, you know if it's your dot one, which it is, that will be your midpoint, which is positive two, which is where I got these two plus twos at the end of our equation. As for negative four, our stretch factor, so it's the top of the graph is at six, while the bottom is at negative two. Add that together, that's eight, not including the negative. Half of that is four which is where I got our four. For the negative portion, as you can see, this is a positive graph, and this is a negative graph, or again, a positive graph. So for sine, this is always gonna be your dot one in the middle. It's going down first, which means it's negative because this is a positive graph and it's going upward. So this one is negative. As for cosine, your first dot will always be on the top of the graph or the bottom of the graph. In this case, it's at the bottom of the graph, and it's going up first, which means it's negative because on here we're going down first. Now I have found the x values of our equation. For cosine, which is our dot right here, is lined up with pi, and it's always the opposite sign, so it's negative pi or x minus pi. For sine, our first dot's here, which is lined up with negative 0.25 pi, but in here we have no decimals, so I changed it to pi over four positive. So the equation we're gonna be using to find the b value is pb equals two pi. Now we know our p value, which is the stretch of a full cycle. Now, right here we have a half cycle. We need to have a full cycle B value. So in order to have that, we have this over here pointing at negative one and a half, and over here it's at pi. That's a half cycle, which is two and a half pi in distance. Now we need to multiply that by two in order to get a full cycle, which is five. So our full stretch of the full cycle is 5 pi. So we plug that in for p, and we divide 5 pi by both sides, and we get b equals 2 over 5, which is now in our equation. So that concludes this problem. These are our two cosine and sine equations of the graph. For number two, I have already set up my equations here with the y cosine x and y sine x. I have put in my midpoint and stretch. As you can see, the midpoint's at positive three, so I put plus three at the end of our equations. And six is our stretch because the full vertical distance is 12 and half is six. And these are both positive because the sine dot one is going up and the cosine dot one is going down.
therefore they are both positive. So I went ahead and found my x values, which on the cosine is at 1.75, other words, 1 and 3 fourth, other words, 7 over 4. So I put negative 7 pi over 4, or x minus 7 pi over 4. And for the sine, 0 0.1, I put negative pi over 4, as it is at 0.25 positive. So then I used our equation PB equals 2 pi, and our stretch factor runs from 1 and 1 fourth to 1.75. Doubling that would give you 6, 2 over 6, also known as 1 third. So that is our B value. Therefore, giving us our two full equations of this graph, number 2. For number 3, I have set up the equation. Now I'm going to find the stretch and the midpoint. So for our midpoint, is at negative 3, so that is a minus 3 at the end of our equation, and our 5 comes from our full stretch of 10 divided by 2 is 5, negative, the sine graph is going down first while the cosine graph is going up first. And our x values for cosine is negative 3 fourths, well positive turning into a negative, and our x value for sine is negative 1 half, therefore it's x plus pi over 2. Then we found our b value. Our full stretch was 5, considering our half was 1 and a half. 2 over 5 is our b value. And that gives us our two full equations of cosine and sine for number 3. So I have gone ahead and set up my equations, done our stretch factor and our midpoint, and as well as our B value, because to get one of the points on the graph for our x value, we need to do a little more math to find out what that point is. Because as you can see, this point right here isn't really lined up with any number. We know this one is pi over 2, and that is our cosine 1, so it would be minus pi over 2. To find the value of the sine, we are going to take our half cycle here. So from 0.25 to 1 half is 3 fourths. So what I have done here is we already found out that from here to here is 3 fourths. Now we need to get here. So 3 fourths times 1 half will give you this space right here. From this dot, or sorry, this dot to this dot will give you that, which is 3 eighths. So this full distance here is 3 eighths. Now what we need to find is from 0 to that point. How we do that is we take the full half length, 3 eighths, and subtract it from the whole 1 half. And once you have done that, you will get 1 over 8, which you can then plug in to your x value equation. So those are your two full equations of cosine and sine for number four, our final problem.